The reason you're socially anxious is because you believe people view you as something other than you want to be viewed. You people, you think people view you as weak or stupid or people view you as you have a stutter or not important. I guarantee you wouldn't have social anxiety if you could grab your enemies by their neck and crush. Yeah, when you could snap a man's larynx with your thumb and forefinger, it really does stop the social anxiety, you know? Social anxiety. My secret. I know Aikido. I said this last night. Last night, Batman was on the TV. Okay. And Catwoman was running around with a whip. I'm Catwoman. Hiya. Hiya. I was like, bitch. I would just. Aikido. Yeah. Yeah. Make me a sandwich. Catwoman would make me a fucking sandwich. And I would Aikido her whip, turning up like a little hoe. Hey, yeah, hey. I would have a clean house and a meal. Social anxiety, that. As for cigars, I believe in vitamin C. I think you can read up lots of uh, studies about how vitamin C is actually good for you. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't worry about it too much, friend. The key is to keep training. If you train hard every single day, you don't have to worry about a little bit of vitamin C. It's true. If you don't train and you don't smoke, you're still going to be a pussy. Yes. The answer is always hard, hard work. work. As soon as you are granted life, you are guaranteed death. What you do in between is up to you. You are all conscious. That could end tomorrow. That could end in 100 years. But the time between the beginning of your consciousness and the end of it is completely up to you. Training is never the wrong decision. If you're in jail, you should train. If you are free, you should train. If you are rich, you should train. If you are poor, you should train. If you smoke, you should train. If you don't smoke, you should train. If you drink, you should train. If you don't drink, you should train. You cannot escape that hard work. It's always the correct decision. There is no time in any scenario when working hard is going to be the wrong answer. You should always try your very best in all things. I will smoke 10 cigars a day and beat the shit out of you. Because I train harder than you can possibly fathom. That is why I am the top G. That is why Catwoman must make my sandwiches on command. You sitting around worried about smoking the odd cigars because you have skinny arms. There's a version of you that never sleeps in, never skips training, never wastes time. There's a version of you who never fails. It is waiting for you. Genuinely ask yourself a question. You at home. If you had done those things for the last two years... You never skipped a training. You never wasted time. You never scrolled TikTok. You never jerked off the Pornhub. You never sat aimlessly on the internet typing in garbage, never played video games. You never wasted time. You never skipped training. You were training every single day. You never slept in. You were never lazy. There's this version of you. Imagine the person you would be. Genuinely imagine what you would look like. Imagine where you would live. Imagine the car you would drive. Imagine how much your woman re would respect you. Imagine the love you would see in her eyes when she looks at you with adoration like a king. Imagine your existence. That person is waiting for you. And the only thing that's stopping you from being that person is your monumental laziness. You can have it. The universe is very giving. It will give you anything you work for. I've never seen somebody try for something with all of their might and not get it. The only people who do not have the things they want are the people who do not try for them. I've never seen a person wake up and say, my only dedication in life is to solve a Rubik's Cube and fail. You are not stupid. You are not incompetent. You are lazy and arrogant. It's extremely important you understand that that person is waiting for you and you are declining that version of yourself. In the multiverse, in the many different versions of the universe that exist, there is a version of you that does those exact things. And he is a greater person than you can even fathom. You can transform yourself into that guy. You can be a top G. That's exactly what I did. I knew who I was going to have to end up being before I became that person. My brother and I are not from rich families. We are not from advantaged beginnings. But I knew I had to be a big, strong, fighting billionaire. That's what I knew I had to be. I wanted to be Batman, so I became Batman. It's extremely important that I got up knowing what I wanted to be and did it. And it's also another important point I want to make because I... Pain is an extremely important part of the equation. Pain is the elixir of success. When people say this bad thing happened to me and I'm suffering, I say good. It is pain which is required. It's one of the elements in the chemical reaction. If the chemical reaction requires five particular in dis uh, distinct compounds and you have four and you're missing one, it simply doesn't work. 
pain for a man is one of the most important elements in becoming successful. Batman is Batman because they killed his parents. If they did not kill his parents, he would not be Batman. You're supposed to suffer. You're supposed to take that pain. The worst thing that can happen to you as a man is you live a life with no pain in it. To be born into a rich family and have a nice easy life and be given money and you don't have to go to the gym and not have to train because you have bodyguards and sit around like a fuck up. You're going to be miserable and unhappy and a drug addict buying prostitutes. You're only going to have women who adore you. You're only going to feel confident in yourself and feel happy when you've been through hell and come out the other side. The pain is required. And you'll often notice that people who are better than you are people who have suffered more than you have suffered. So the person who is waiting for you, he requires your motivation. It also requires huge amounts of pain. So when bad things happen to you, do not sit at home and lament. Do not feel sorry for yourself. Instead, look in the mirror and say, thank you, God, for giving me one of the ingredients that is needed for the chemical concoction that is going to turn me into a superhero. Because pain is an extremely important one. In fact, it's one of the most important ones for a man. The interesting thing about it all is women are the gatekeepers to sex. Women are the ones who decide who's has sex with who, but it is men who are the gatekeepers to commitment. Do you understand? You can decide which man has sex with you, but I get to decide which woman I'm committed to. And that's the difference. And I am the ultimate gatekeeper of commitment. My time is valuable. My energy is valuable. I'm saving the world against the matrix. For me to take time out of my life and dedicate it to making you feel special is worth billions of dollars. And now I've replied to you for the first time ever. And if you are truly the woman who you've meant to be with the top G, you have a challenge to try and complete. Once again, obtain my attention. Once again, gain my interest. Hopefully, maybe if you do a very good job, we'll meet someplace one day. We'll have a nice coffee. It'll be beautiful. You'll be nervous. You'll be shy. I know. I'm very forgiving. And then find a way to make me interested in dedicating myself to you. You done? Good luck. All right. I believe in future Andrew. Like right now, I consider myself an absolute genius with unmatched perspicacity, sheer indefatigability, and brutal competence. In 10 years from now, I'll be even better. Mm. So I can spend, let's imagine I want to spend all our money, $1.1 billion, whatever. I spend it all today. Okay. Future Andrew ain't going to be a brokey. Yeah. Future Andrew is no way going to sit around. He'll take care of it. Feeling sorry for himself being broke. I spend my money. Me, 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 me. Therapy? What? No way. Future Andrew is going to fix it because Andrew's a fixer and I'm only going to get better with time. I believe in future me. I do not fear a jail sentence. I do not fear going broke. I do not fear haters. I do not fear a bullet. If it is possible to be fixed, future Andrew's going to fix it. In fact, if you were to say to me, Andrew, a problem's coming up in three years from now. Who do you want to fix it for you? The number one person I would choose would be future Andrew. Mm. I'll be a better version of myself in three years than I am today because I know that three years ago I was not as capable as I am right now. Mm -hmm. I believe in future me, so I live without fear. Buy the car. Discipline is the key to success. If you cannot force yourself to do something you don't want to do, how are you ever going to put yourself through the suffering required for greatness? If you cannot force yourself to train when you do not want to train, if you cannot force yourself to work when you don't want to work, if you can't force yourself to not log into Pornhub or force yourself to eat right, how can you possibly ever become a monumentally successful person if you cannot control yourself long enough to do what must be done as opposed to what you feel like doing? The only people who get to live their lives based on how they feel are women and children. Children can cry because they feel like crying, as can a woman. A woman can start an argument because she feels like arguing, as can a child. A man must do what he is supposed to do, regardless, irregardless of how he feels. That is the key component to masculinity, is discipline. If you do not have the discipline to dedicate yourself to anything, you are going to fail and be crushed by the people who can. If you only go to the gym when you feel like going to the gym, you're never going to be as strong as the people who go to the gym when they don't feel like going to the gym. That is a reality of life. So, I train every single day. I've actually heard from some people saying, you overtrain. And I explained to them, one, I don't believe in rest. I'm not you, I'm not pussy, and I'm not broke like you are, Mr. Fitness Trainer, standing around the gym teaching people for $50 an hour. I don't need to listen to you. Secondly, I don't train because I wanna get bigger. I train every day because it is difficult to train every day. It hurts. I don't want to. I wake up and I'm busy. I have other things to do. I don't feel like doing it. So I force myself to do it seven days a week, 365 days a year so that I know I'm the kind of person who can do what he doesn't want to do when it needs to be done. 
I am that man. And it's more of a mental exercise than a physical exercise at this point. How can you ever outcompete me if I can force myself to do the things I don't want to do and you cannot? Discipline is absolutely essential for success. And you need to get very comfortable and very used to the idea of understanding that on your path to greatness, there are going to be long periods of time where you hate what you are doing, where you are dissatisfied with the actions you must undertake, where you are tired, where you are stressed. That is why it is difficult. That is why most people won't make it. If the path was easy, everybody would walk it and it would lead nowhere. A hundred people start the path, 99 fall off because it is difficult and the one person who makes it to the end gets the gold. If all a hundred made it to the end and the gold was divided by a hundred, it wouldn't even be worth anything. The difficulty gives it value. The fact that it is difficult to do is the key component into the fact you want it in the first place. If it wasn't difficult, everyone would have it and you wouldn't want it because no one would respect it. It's supposed to be hard. Life is supposed to be hard. You're supposed to think this is is terrible you're supposed to suffer and smile through the pain regardless discipline is the key to success in all realms as a man and if you lack it you stand no chance you can give most people a road map to success you can give them a ferrari with a full tank of gas and a lot of people still wouldn't make the destination because they would say the drive is too far away quitters they don't have the discipline you can tell them exactly how to do it you can give them the mechanism to get there but they don't have the discipline to complete the drive and end up at the destination that is the majority of earth this is your competition people who even if they are told what to do and people tell them exactly how to do it and help them do it still quit still fail because they lack discipline even me with my monumental powers and unlimited aikido and energy Aikido technique. I can't make a quitter successful. It doesn't matter how good I am. It doesn't matter how easily I make it for them to succeed. It doesn't matter how compendious and concise and powerful the real world is. It doesn't matter how much I text them and motivate them, how many emergency meetings I do to try and talk to them and hype them up, how much motivation I give them. It doesn't matter what I do. If they are a quitter, guess what they're going to do? They're going to quit. No matter how simple the map is to read, no matter how fast the Ferrari is, somewhere along the drive, the sun's going to get in their eyes me, me, and they're going to sit there and go, this is, I don't like that. This is hard. And they're going to quit. Quitters are the number one type of people that nobody can help. If you're a quitter, I can't help you. Life can't help you. God himself cannot help a quitter. So if you lack discipline, you lack the very basic building block to any type of success which exists on the planet. By every single metric which can be measured with science, you are going to stay a loser and a failure.